This presentation is about part of the anatomy and physiology of the larynx. We will be learning about the cavity of the larynx, mucous membrane of the larynx, spaces of the larynx, difference between adult and infant larynx and the functions of the larynx. Laryngeal cavity extends from the inlet to the lower border of the cricoid cartilage. The inlet is an oblique opening bounded anteriorly by the free margin of the epiglottis, laterally by the area epiglottic folds, and posteriorly by the erythroid cartilages. And within the cavity of the larynx, two prominent holes are seen vestibular folds and the vocal folds. The vestibular folds are two folds running anterior posteriorly across the laryngeal cavity. It contains a vestibular ligament and few fibers of the three row arytenoidus muscle. And the vocal cords are two pearly white structures running anterior posteriorly from the middle of the thyroid angle to the vocal process of the arytenoids. So this vocal cords has a vocal, it consists of a vocal ligament which is the upper edge of the cricovocal membrane. This is the upper edge of the cricovocal membrane called the vocal ligament and this is closely bound attached to the mucous membrane here and only scanty sub-epithelial connective tissues are present here which I will be discussing later in the presentation. Now these two folds divide the laryngeal cavity into vestibule, ventricle and subglottis. What is vestibule? It extends from the laryngeal inlet to the level of the vestibular fold and ventricle lies between the true and the false vocal cords and this ventricle may extend laterally to a certain extent and sometimes even it can get dilated to form what is called laryngocele. Subglottic space, it extends from the true opal cords to the level of the lower border of the cricoid cartilage. And the gap between the true opal cord is called rima glottidis and the gap between the false opal cord is called rima vestibuli. Mucous membrane of the larynx, the majority is ciliated column, columnar epithelium whereas the vocal cord and the uppermost part of the <coughs> vestibule is lined by stratified squamous epithelium. Larynx has an interesting lymphatic drainage. The vocal cords literally they don't have lymphatics or very sparse lymphatics. Hence they act as a watershed. The lymphatics above the level of the vocal cord drain into the upper deep cervical lymph node whereas the below the level of Lymph vocal cords they drain into the lower deep cervical lymph nodes. Because of the sparsity of lymphatics, the vocal cord malignancies rarely metastasize into the cervical lymph node. Now, there are some spaces within the larynx pre epiglottic space, paraglottic space, and the ring case space. The pre epiglottic space of Boyer it is bounded anteriorly by the upper part of the thyroid cartilage and the thyrohyoid membrane. Superior it is limited by the hyoepiglottic ligament and posteriorly infrahyoid epiglottis and part of the quadrangular membrane. Laterally it is continuous with the paraglottic space and this preepiglottic space is filled with fat and some areolar tissue loose area of tissue and some lymph nodes. And when a laryngeal tumor extends to the pre-epiglottic space because of the presence of the fat that becomes radio insensitive or radio resistant. Now paraglottic space, they para means on the sides. They are on the sides of the vocal cords paraglottic. It is bounded laterally by the thyroid cartilage inferomedially by the conus elasticus and medially by the ventricle and the quadrangular membrane and mucosa of the pyriform fossa posterior. It is limited posteriorly by the mucosa of the pyriform fossa. Now 
Interesting thing is the ring case space. It is a potential sub epithelial space between the epithelium and the conus elasticus. And this is a space uh, filled with the scanty connected tissue. It is limited above and below by the arcuate lines, anteriorly by the anterior commissure, and posteriorly the ocal process of the retinal cartilage. Interesting thing about the infantile larynx is it is smaller absolutely and relatively it is situated at a higher level the adult is at it extend from cervical 3 to 6 whereas infant is at a higher level that is why an infant can still breathe when suckling and it is funnel shaped and because of the funnel shape the subglottic is the narrowest adult is a cylindrical or tubular and glottis is the narrowest portion and laryngeal cartilages of an infant are soft and collapsible now the functions of the larynx, even though it is called a voice box, voice is not the main function of the larynx. It is the respiration is the main function and it helps in respiration by protecting the airway, by providing a passage to respiration and also it provides just a fixation in manual work and certain actions and of course phonation is an accessory function. How it protects the how it helps in respiration? One is by protection of the lower airway. The sphincter action. Larynx is a sphincter at the inlet of the respiratory tract, lower respiratory tract, and the sphincter is provided by the airy epiglottic fold closure, false vocal cord closure, and the true vocal cord closure. Among these, true vocal cord closure is the strongest sphincter. And there is cessation of the respiration during deglutition, hence, it the chance of aspiration is minimized and of course even if there is minimal aspiration the cough re reflex will help in protecting the lower airway by pushing the foreign body out of the air larynx is a air it provides an air passage and modulation it provides modulation of the air when it passes through the larynx the vocal cords open when during inspiration, the vocal cord closed during phonation. The fixation of the chest is an important action required in manual laborers and manual work. And how this is achieved? When the lung is filled with air, how it is filled with air? After a deep inspiration, the vocal cords come together and glottis is closed. This is important during lifting the weight, climbing and also during childbirth. Phonation is an interesting function of the larynx and the voice generators, basically the power source is in the larynx. Always the lung powered voice is a better one. The power source is in the lungs. Once the power is generated, the vocal cords vibrate. The vibration of the vocal cord, they produce. The, once the vocal cords they vibrate and uh, produce sound intermittent opening and closing will produce the sound and this is modulated by the tongue and the lips and it is amplified in the pharynx oral cavity and the nasal cavity that's about the anatomy and physiology of the larynx